Last year for Halloween, I showed you how to do Gary the Ghost. A very simple ghost. And this year, I'm going to show you how to do a very simple skull. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to create this little skull or something very, very similar. So without further ado, let's get started and of course, Happy Halloween. Now when I start, I'm going to use just mainly circles for this design. So we're going to go to our circles and ellipses tool and then we're going to create a circle in the center of the canvas. This circle will be around the right size. And I am going to convert this to a path by going to path, object to path. Next, I want to be able to do some teeth. So I just want to create the top row of teeth. We're not going to do the bottom row for this skull. So in order to do that, I'm going to simply create a rectangle with curved edges. Now what I mean by that is coming to the squares and rectangles tool, I'm going to simply create a rectangle around that thickness and size. And now with this circular little handle here, I'm just going to move it all the way so we now get a perfect curve around each of the ends. With that done, we are going to repeat what we did on the last one and we're going to go path, object to path. It is now its own individual shape. Now I'm going to go back to my select tool because we want this to be vertical. So in order to get it to go vertical, we're going to click on it a second time and get the rotation handles. And now I'm just going to hold control in order to lock the proportions on 15 degree increments like so. And I'm going to rotate it all the way around until it's completely vertical like so. With that done, I'm going to click on it again. Now it's worth mentioning just because I have got this circle and this shape here, both at a lower percentage of opacity. As you can see in the bottom, it says 50% opacity. This is just going to help while we are composing where all the shapes go. So if you think that it is too much or too little, this is the time where you can manipulate the shape and you can make it exactly how big you want it. So with this shape, using this little resize handle here i'm going to hold shift and control and i'm going to scale it down just a little to get the size that i want now when it comes to lining this up snapping will help you so make sure you have snapping enabled in the top right corner here once that's enabled you can come down to the bottom and you can make sure that you are snapping the right side onto the center of the circle. And with that done, I'm going to right click, duplicate, and I'm going to slide that over. And then I'm going to do this again, but this time I'm going to hold shift, select them both, right click, duplicate, and then I'm going to slide them over to here. Now we have our teeth even though they don't quite look like teeth yet. However, I think they come down way too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them and I'm just going to raise these up until we get to where we want. But if you want to fine tune it, you can turn snapping off, fine tune where you want it to go, and then you can turn snapping back on. And now with all four of them placed exactly where we want them, we can also hold shift, select the main circle, and then go to path and union. That has now made it all one shape. Now, finally, we just want one more shape. And of course, the shape for these are going to be 
a circle with the circle and ellipses tool and I'm just going to come to this corner here and create a circle while holding shift and control to lock the proportions. Now these don't have to be big, I just want it to be around that size. Now with that done, I am simply going to pass object to pass and then I'm going to right click it and duplicate again. Now with snapping still enabled, I'm going to use my select tool so I can drag it off to the side and snap it onto the other side right here. Now again, we're going to select everything and we are going to go to Path Union. And to select everything, then I just held Control and pressed A. And now we have a very simple shape of a skull. Now, like I said, this is not going to be a complex design. This is going to be a very simple skull that anybody can do. Now, in order to get the look that we're wanting, the best thing we can do here is add a stroke and make sure the fill is something along a very pale yellow or orange. Now for that color, I can come down to my color swatches at the bottom. I'm going to take this bar here, which is the oranges. And of course, we've selected a very light orange, very, very pastel based orange. And the code for this is hashtag F4E3D7. So if you wanted to copy along exactly, that is the color I am using. Now with that done, I am going to select the black. But this time I'm going to hold shift when I select it. And there we go. We now have a black stroke. And of course, for this one, we can turn up the opacity to 100% again. But now we want this stroke to be very thick. In order to do this, we're going to need our fill and stroke menu. You can find this by selecting this button here or you can double click on these colors at the bottom. Either way, you will open up this menu. Now with this menu open, we can go to stroke style. And as you can see, it's already set to five. So we're going to need to increase this quite a lot. Let's try 20. That's way, way better. Now, as you can see as well, my join and my cap are both rounded. That is why if I zoom in, you've got these curved edges here. If I was to leave it on the default, which are these, as you can see, it is very much a pointed edge, but I want this to be very cartoony. So I want all the edges to be smooth. In order to do that, you just need to have a rounded cap and join. And there you go. Now, all I've done is created this shape and I've increased the size so it takes up more of the canvas. But now we need to add some details. The details that I want to add are the nose, the eyes, and of course, I'm going to extend these points here just a little bit coming vertically up. So next we have our circles and ellipses tool. Like I said, this shape is going to require more circles than anything else and they are very easy to do now i'm going to create two circles for the eyes these want to be quite big and prominent something like that would do and i'm also going to convert this one to a path too now with this shape we don't need a stroke we just need a fill so i'm going to come back down to the bottom here i'm going to select the black to get a black fill and then i'm going to hold shift and i'm going to come to this red x to get rid of the stroke with that done i can now reduce or increase the size to get the exact size that we want now as i said i want it to be quite big but obviously it doesn't need to be too big so i'm just playing around with it until i get the size that i want and that looks about right to me about there and with that done i am now going to right click duplicate and i'm going to hold control while i shift this to the side and now we have 
out of our eyes. But in order to get this central so it's all lined up perfectly, I'm going to hold shift, select both of the circles, and then go to path, union. Now they are both one object, and we can select the main shape behind while holding shift. And we can open our align and distribute menu in order to line everything up. Now, if you haven't already got your line and distribute menu open, you can find it on the side right here. Click this and this menu will open. Now we want to go to the drop down and select last selected. And with that done, we can simply use this button right here, which says center on vertical axis and that will line everything up. As you can see, it didn't move very much, but it moved enough. Now we have everything lined up. Now there's a little trick when it comes to doing the nose. The nose doesn't need to be big, but I want to make sure that it is perfectly lined up and it is central. So in order to do that, I'm just going to bring in a guideline one right here this ruler where it says pixels that's just giving me what i have set has my measurements on the ruler which is pixels i'm going to click drag and as you can see it drags a guideline out now these guidelines are not going to be there in the final image when you render these are just exactly what they say a guide now with snapping turned on, as you can see, it is automatically snapping onto the top edge in the center. So when it gets to there, I'm going to let go and we now have our guideline. Now in order to do this little nose, it's very, very simple. I'm going to go to my pen tool, select that, and now I'm going to zoom in. And with that done, I'm going to select where I want the nose to start from so the top of the nose and then i'm going to come down and select the bottom of the nose in order to do this just select where you want the nose to start give it a click and then as you come down as you can see the snapping tool automatically snaps onto the guideline now i want it to come down to about here and then i'm just going to click and drag up and to the left and then you're looking at the red curved line. And as you can see, the more I pull away, the bigger it gets. When you get to, to the place that you want it, which I think around there is absolutely fine, let go and then right click. And this will temporarily end the curve. Then you just have to simply click come up and click again on the top box we now have the nose even though it doesn't look like a nose right now but the simple way of doing this is by right click duplicate and then using the select tool we can come up to these four icons here and we can select this one flip horizontal once we've done that you will see something that looks like this. Now with this, we're just going to click and drag holding control while we do in order to snap it to this point. Now we're going to hold shift, select them both. And of course, you can guess by now, we're going to go to path, union. We now have our nose. But in order to make it fit with everything else, we're going to need to fill this with black and we can turn the stroke off by holding shift and pressing the red X. And now when we zoom out, as you can see, we now have our little skull. But we are going to obviously increase these little points a little bit. Now in order to do this, it is very, very simple. We have snapping turned on. We use our pen tool. And as you can see, if I zoom in a little bit more, it's easier for you to see. It snaps right on to the ball of each of these points. Like so. We're going to click, drag up. 
and then click where we want it to end. And that is it. Right click and we have the little extension. Now we're going to change the stroke width so we can make this the same width as this line down here. Of course, that means going back to our fill and stroke menu, going to stroke style and increasing the width. Now, if you remember, the width I set for this line here was 20. So we're going to use that same width again. And as you can see, it is more like what we need. Of course, I am going to change the rounded join and cap, and then I can just incrementally up the thickness until we get it as a smooth line coming off. Now, what I mean by that is, as you can see, if I zoom right in, it comes up and then it sort of jumps in a little bit and creates this little corner. And that's not what we want. So I'm just going to keep increasing it until it looks more of a gradual curve all the way up. With that done, as you can see, that's about right. So I've gone for 27 there. It now juts out a little bit. So you've got to try and find the sweet spot in order to get it to look right. And for me, that looks about as good as I'm going to get it. So with that done, we can now right click, duplicate, and we can just slide this over again. And again, right click, duplicate, to move it over and then let go of control while you're over the top and it will lock on with the snapping tool. Now, if these are too high, like you can see, they come up above this corner here. I don't think that quite looks right. So what I'm going to do is select all three of them. And then using this vertical resize handle here, I'm just going to slowly bring that down until I get the height that I want. That looks about right to me. And then make sure everything is lined up as it should be. And as you can see, there's still that little bump. So you just have to keep coming backwards and forwards to make sure that it is all lined up. Now, the reason that that happens is because I have this selected. When scaling objects, scale the stroke with by the same proportion. That means when I'm increasing or decreasing the size, the stroke width will remain the same. If you deselect this and then you try and increase the stroke width, you will get a much more consistent look and the stroke width will remain. Now I can show you this by simply creating this rectangle right here. Now, as you can see, I haven't got this button selected. So when I reduce the size, you can see how the stroke will remain exactly the same width. However, when I increase that again, it will go back to the same width that it always was. Selecting this button and then reducing it will keep the proportions of the stroke exactly as they are when you scale it up or down. Now, because I had that selected and I didn't remember to turn it off, that is why I had to readjust these pieces right here. But I digress. Now we have our skull. And it is as simple as that, my friends. If I turn off the guides, you have created a very simple skull. Of course, you can go further. You can add some shading like this, and you can also add something in the eyes, like little cartoon bubbles or something along those lines. The possibilities are endless. Let your imagination run wild. But as you can see, using a few rounded ends of a rectangle and a lots of circles, you can create a skull very quickly. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? 
well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.